So our uh, presentation today, Gardening with Kids, we've got three of our local junior master gardener experts. We've got Carlene Brand, we've got Dorothy Malone, we've got Kathleen Buchanan, and they're going to be sharing uh, some tips, some techniques, some activities that you can do with kids, with grandkids, with neighbor kids, whoever, to get them interested in gardening. So ladies, we appreciate you being with us today. Thank you very much. I'm Kathleen, in case anybody, everybody knows me. This is Miss Dorothy and Miss Eileen. Um, gardening with kids. We decided on this topic because the majority of our, our master gardeners are in their senior years. They're fun years, right? And so we have grandkids, or uh, there are some young people. They're not here, but we do have some young members that do have children. That, um, that could benefit from this. And you may even have some great, great grandchildren that visit. Or like, like uh, he said earlier, maybe just friends or nieces or nephews or somebody. Um, if, if any of y'all are like me, my grandkids, when they come see Nana, well, first of all, they're city kids. So coming to the country is, is out of their comfort zone. Um, <laughs> When they come see Nana and Poppy, they're not allowed I iPads, they're not allowed cell phones. So, they're typically bored to death. We, they can't just stay inside and watch TV. I have, um, I have seven grandkids with one on the way. Six are boys. The one expected is another boy. Uh, and then I have one girl. Uh, she's the oldest. So it's 13 to uh, 4. So anyway, they're bored. Um, I, I usually don't let them watch TV unless it's nighttime. They can watch a, a family movie at night. So during the day, we're outside. Unless it's raining, we're outside. Um, I thought they'd get a real kick out of planting a garden. So man, first year that I had them all come out and we had our garden set up, we planted seeds. Well, the problem was the next day they wanted to see <laughs> uh, you know, we're in this society right now that is, you know, instant gratification, instant grat yeah. Where's the plants? Well, what do you mean that it's going to take a month? A month, you know. Uh, so that they didn't like that. Um, then we started from then on, you know, I'd get seeds, you know, I'd get little plant starters, and, and at least, you know, that, that helped. Then we went to harvesting. Well, that was pretty much fun, except when it's 102 degrees, you know, in July or August, then that wasn't fun. Five minutes and we're done. So then we started trying to think of, well, what are other things we're doing we could do outside with kids? Um, and like, duh, I am a junior master gardener. I do teach things that you can do. Why don't I do it with my grandkids? Um, so some of these things are what we do in class, but a lot of them are not. Um, but they're really fun. Before we do anything, though, um, always safety. Safety, safety. Garden gloves, hats, visors, sunscreen. Watch for snakes. I have a walking stick that I use when I walk every day that I kind of beat the, the bushes and the, and the garden with uh, before we start, always. I don't use any pesticides or herbicides. I do, well, I do. It's all organic. I don't use anything that's not organic. Good hand washing afterwards. That's very important. And of course, a nail brush if you have it. And we're giving you nail brushes today. So you'll have those. And something that my mother-in-law um, taught me years ago was that she would always take a bar of soap and a, a, a bar and she would scrape her fingernails down it before she even put on her gloves. And what it, what it did was, after she was finished and took her gloves off, or maybe she didn't wear gloves, when she came back inside to wash her hands, she never had any dirt or anything under the fingernails. The, the soap just washed away that was under her nails. So I thought that was a pretty cool thing. So that's just a little tidbit for you. And you got your brush. So let's get started. OK, this is a really fun project. Um, in this, they show that they're actually buried in the ground. They actually planted these, but I don't. I put them in pots. I get those really fast-growing vines, the uh, potato vines, and or you could do even uh, pole beans if you wanted. But you just use bamboo poles or sticks, you know, long long poles, tree branches, whatever. You latch them together at the top. You use a zip zip line or twine, and then you and then you make 
some twine back and forth, of course, all up and down it so that it can grow up it. It grows really fast. You'll have a teepee in no time. You just leave the opening you know, open, and they'll go inside and play in there. And my kids, my grandkids love that. They think that's awesome. So that's one thing you can do. You put the poles in about four to six inches deep uh, you know, when you get started, so they won't blow away the wind. How long does that take to grow or get started um, while about, they're there? Well, it, 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 it's almost it's like they grow overnight, those, those potato vines. But I would say in, in three weeks or so, three to four weeks, you'll, you'll have it you know, all the way up here. It's really fun. And how long are the poles that you use? They're six to nine, about six to nine feet, and you do the, they're, you, you, you can use scrap lumber, lumber anything, mm -hmm. to put them up. Yeah, my great grandmother used uh, uh -huh. corn stalks. Corn stalks? Uh -huh. When we were kids. So this has been around for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was inventing something. <laughs> Another outdoor activity is with, bot with uh, water bottles. So if you collect your water bottles, fill them with, have them fill them with water and put their favorite colors in them, shake them up, so dig a trench. This is a huge one. I, you know, don't do this huge one. I do one about this size. Um, and then, you know, stick them in the ground, make a trench, stick them in the ground about a fourth, uh, a, you know, fourth of the bottle buried. And then add your soil, your flowers, your vegetables, whatever you want, a fairy garden. And uh, and they've got a really cool little um, little that kids cute. garden. That's that's cute. Cute. Yeah. So, did you do that when you were little? No. That's right. She just pointed out a good point. It's instant gratification. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Very important. Very important. <laughs> 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 Well, you know, it's a kid thing, so. No, I wasn't going to mention that. But, yes, you could use those. Well. They could even have a little And here's your birdhouse garden. Here's a little birdhouse garden. You can even have them put the birdhouses together. You know, they can make everything in here, pretty much. And then, and then I always like to plant something that the butterflies will come to, you know. But that would be, of course, probably for a little girl. And because I have, out of my grandkids, I have seven boys and one girl. No. We always do a dinosaur rock uh, garden for the for the boys. Um, they're not real interested in the fairy stuff. Is that a tire? That's in an old tire. Yeah, mm -hmm. which you can you know you can do a platter, you can do a pot, um, anything around the house. Yeah, a bucket. Um, but that, but that's fun. Or just in the ground and just do rocks. Just do rocks around. <laughs> so that's a, that's a fun. One. And this, here's just some more pictures. You see, they used a basket here. And just things that they had, you know, around, the, just extra stuff around the house. Pine cones. I mean, what a cute idea. And I liked all these. Of course, that's a raised garden that, uh, no, that they uh, allowed that child to put a fairy garden in. And I love this one. This is, uh, this is a uh, plastic, you know, like a serving dish that's, that's uh, louvered. Uh, and they put those little uh, solar lights in there. Um, Pond. Well, pretty cute. Okay, outdoor activity, another outdoor activity. These are flower pot people. They have to be a little bit older, obviously, but you use your clay pots and turn them, you know, uh, end to end. And uh, you can even do arms and legs, paint them. And oh my goodness, if you go online, Pinterest, there's a hundred thousand of these things, everything you can think of. Football players. I mean, every animal possible. Uh, it's it's really cute. They even have some Texas A&Ms and some you know all their, their whatever their favorite thing is in the world. You can you can help them make. I love the sunglasses and that's more like me in the summer right there. I like that. One. But this is probably I think this is the one that uh, that my kids are going to make uh, at their uh, cousins' camp this year, and they can just pick out their own uh, own flower or vine or whatever they want to put in the top there. Um, but it's, it's, it's relatively simple, two to, two to eight inch pots, paintbrush and scissors, you know, glue, acrylic seal, uh, the sealer, and then some kind of rope. So you can just design it any way you want, spray it with the sealer, it can go inside or outside. Um, of course you use the little holes, obviously, and the underside of the pot is where you tie your knots for if you're going to do the arms and legs. But pretty cute.
That's a fun one. Okay, this one. I really like this. And if you're a cactus lover, um, you can either use, um, I'm, the one that I did is, a, is the, you know, the bottom uh, like saucer. The sa saucer. saucer, thank yeah. you. The saucer for the, <laughs> for the pot. They're using a pot, it looks like, here when they do theirs. But, uh, but I use the saucer. And um, Cousins Camp is just before Father's Day, so we're going to do one for Father's Day and say, we love you, Dad, and then they'll do their own um, thing and take that home to, to Daddy. Um, but they're really fun to make, too. Very easy. Um, I suggest that you mix some sand with your potting soil. Um, and, of course, rocks. Rocks just gives it such a pretty effect when you're done. And Bobo's has all of these, all of these types of different succulents. So you can create, you know, anything you want. Water, you put four it out for six dollars. Four, four for six dollars. Four for six dollars now? What a bargain! Okay, we all need to do that. All right. I think Dorothy is gonna jump in here and do a few slides, please, ma'am. Okay. I want to push that button right there. The there you go. Okay, we're going to talk about outdoor activities. Uh, believe it or not, I grew up in, in and with a gardening family. My grandfather, my mother, would always tell us one of the best. He was one of the best gardeners in in Oakwood, Texas. He could grow anything. <laughs> and so naturally, uh, we grew up in this type of an atmosphere. But anyway, outdoor activities, this is one of, this is a do-it-yourself bird bath. You can choose from two different sizes of pots, paint it, whatever color or design you want to put on it, you know. And, and with kids, they're going to be creative anyway, and you know it's not going to be perfect, and we don't want it to be perfect right. because we know the kids are doing this. You know, you can, the thing about me is that usually when I get started with something, you can ask Carlene this morning, she said, Dorothy, I'm going to cut up all of the fruit at the house. I said, no, don't cut up any fruit at the house. She says, well, I get up in the morning and I'll cut the fruit up. I said, no, don't cut the fruit up in the morning. Just bring it all. <laughs> it's okay if it looks like a mess as long as you got it. An idea right up here. It has to be organized. And with children, that's okay because it turned, it did it great. great. You know, we had reading going on this morning. We were cutting up fruit this morning. Kids were issuing out plates this morning. They had the forks. They were they were answering questions back and forth across the classroom. But we had a ball. We did. Yeah. <laughs> we really did. We had a ball. So as I said, it's not going to be it's not gonna look like this when kids are doing it. But needless to say, it's going to be fun. And as I said, I do a lot of that living along the way because I have all these little ideas that pop up in my head. <laughs> because growing up, as I said, we grew up and my mother would give us a spot in the garden. And if you didn't want a spot in the garden, well hey. There are four corners to the house. You choose the corner you want. Mm -hmm. And then she'd give you a spot on the side of the house. And if you wanted to raise roses, you could raise roses. Mm -hmm. She had one of the most beautiful rose bushes in her yard. Mm -hmm. Or if you wanted to raise you, turnip greens. Mm -hmm. okay. I even dug a hole in the ground and made a barbecue pit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm, I'm serious, y'all. Mm -hmm. And I smoked the meat there. Mm -hmm. She gave me some meat to smoke. Mm -hmm. So we did things like that. So, it's all fun, but anyway, I'm, I'm going to try to stick with this so we can get finished. <laughs> um, place the soil and the flowering plants around the edges of the larger pot, and then we're going to set the smaller one in the center of the larger pot, and we're going to fill it with water. Mm -hmm. And we can add another tier to this if we want to, okay? Uh, this is... Then we go, oh, I thought you were going to do that. <laughs> I was going to do it in real life. I did. Oh, I'm going to do it here. I'm sorry. I thought Carlene was done. You know, you I can kinda, do it. All right. I decorated. And these are just so cute, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and I'm not going to, nobody would ever see my husband's bed because he puts them all the way in a backfield. But I think these are absolutely cute when, I, when Carlene showed them to me. This. This is decorating hay bales. Let your children use their imagination on this one. Use spray paint. It, 
not a windy day. <laughs> Plastic, painted cardboard, metal accents, or anything that you have on hand, and this is especially fun to decorate around the holidays. You know, we know this this really is going to be a a fun project. And when Carlene first mentioned this and Kathleen, we were all talking about this, and I saw this, and my brain started trying to figure out where I could put this so folks could see. But I don't I don't have a piece of the road. You know, I'm I'm back I'm on the back forty. So I don't have a piece of the road, but I think if anyone has a round bell of hay and you've got a piece of eighty four or seventy five or seventy nine or something like this, you can make a lot of people stop. And smile. I think this would be, uh huh. You know, I think they would be interested to just put them on. Especially go well when we do the scarecrow. Right. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 People yeah. did hay bells when we did the yeah. scarecrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's another one. I think. I think there's another oh. one. That's, uh, Yes. Um, look at that. For, for <laughs> for I'm going to get the bike. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, I, I think they're here. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. I don't I don't know what we're doing here though with the with, with the turkey. That's his tail feathers. Yeah, tail feathers the to make that. Looks like pickets. 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 Oh, oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Live and learn. I thought it was an Indian turkey. You thought it was an Indian turkey. An Indian turkey. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one. I am. I'm metaphorically I like it. I like it. I think this is wonderful. Okay. All right, our next one homemade garden markers. This is a neat idea, you know, because kids, again, they're going to want that instant gratification. And along with instant gratification, they're going to want to know what's, you know, mm -hmm. what's buried where. And I'm about to say what's buried where instead of saying what's planted. <laughs> because they need to know. And if your children, if your grandchildren are like my grandchildren, they're 18 and 20 now. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm left alone to plan the dirt. I need to know because I tend to forget. <laughs> so I'm, I'm reached that point in my life. They're on the back side of it now. So homemade garden markers, an easy do-it-yourself way to mark your plants. You write the plant name and date on this is a three by five or whatever size you want to use. You know, we might have to make them larger nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> you put it inside of a plastic sandwich bag or a little four bags, you know, and then you're going to seal it naturally. Now you can use a clothespin to attach this to a wire, if you have a wire in your garden, especially if you have beans or something like that, if it's a pole or a trellis or netting, even a stick in the ground is a good thing to attach this to. So that way the kiddos and you will know exactly where everything is. But if you're like me, when I was growing up with my great-grandmother, she, we knew where everything was. She, she, you know, she didn't play any of this. You, you forget it. This, we going back to old days. <laughs> and when it was time to harvest, we all had to go into the garden with Grandma, and we had to harvest. You know, and she would teach us how to pull that, that take that ear of corn without breaking it off and just kind of pull that shut down a little bit and stick your fingernail in there to see if it was ready. You know, and you got to watch out for the worms and everything else. How about um, harvesting catfish? Oh yeah, we did that today. We, we, we pulled them out of the ground because we didn't have a nine foot to cut it off. But we, we actually harvested cabbage today. We, we had some of what, about like that? Good. At the nice. Oakwood School? One. So I've got some on the back of my truck right now. Mm -hmm. And I told uh, Miss Carlene that I was going to have to stop telling people that we were raising cabbage because everybody wanted me to bring them more. <laughs> so I couldn't do that and everybody get, you know, get a cabbage or two. So I've got a few cabbage out on the back of my truck that I'm hoping are still out there when I get back. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but anyway, this is a neat way to mark everything and, and, and the children will know exactly where it is, okay? Now, I brought this along also because this is one of the things that I thought was a neat idea. 
Well, if you're going to go to Harvest Fair, you, ha you, ha you have a slide on it. You oh, I have a slide on it. You know, I don't remember all of it. <laughs> I told you. There you go. Right there, there we go. go. Okay. Now, go, go, go to it. Okay, using a plastic basket, you can do it. <laughs> Where it holds in the side. We're going to send our babies out to collect their vegetables. And so, this is simply one of those little, uh, this is one of those little beach things, but I'm going to pretend that these are, these are veggies right here. And the kiddos are going to collect the veggies in this type. You know, actually it said a uh, laundry basket. That's what that is. <coughs> Thank you. My mind didn't click. I'm getting ahead of myself. But. We're going to put everything in this laundry basket, and then we're going to use this along with a pail. Just sit it down in here. Take the hose or your little sprinkler or whatever, and you're going to rinse. Oh, uh -huh. You're going to rinse the veggies, and then after you rinse them, take this out, and you can use your water, pour it back into the garden. Mm -hmm. so, you're going to recycle all of this. Thank you. I needed that word. Uh, <laughs> so, and all of this is right here. We're going to turn it right back to the garden. And it's, it's going to work well for us. But like I said earlier, I think uh, we, uh, Kathleen mentioned safety in the garden. And if you want this, I think it's a wonderful idea. Invest in a little kit for your little ones. You know, oftentimes we want the children to enjoy the thing that we enjoy. Well, I learned along the way that just like I, just like the idea that I, I like pretty things, children do too. If I want my own tool bag, they're going to want a tool bag also. That's true. Y'all following me? Yeah. Uh -huh. They're going to want to emulate you. So my tool bag has gloves in them. They're going to want gloves also. If I have a rake, they're going to want a rake. If I have a, a shovel or one of those little big in trowel, they're going to want that also. You know, I didn't grow up with a trowel or anything like that. Mama would just tell us to go get a... <laughs> Go get a spoon. You know, it's whatever we want. Uh huh. And when it was time to water the plants, I tell everybody that we would take a pail. She would send us to the garden with a pail, and she would send us with a, a little cup. And every evening, every evening, religiously, every plant got a cup of water mm -hmm. to drink. Mm -hmm. And it keeps the kids busy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I said, it may look like a mess, but you have to, but it's organized here. You know what you're doing. And so just invest not only in your garden for yourself, but we're investing in the future when we <coughs> When you buy those gloves, mm -hmm. like I did for my grandsons, mm -hmm. then at a certain point they told me, you need to check our hands. Yeah. We need new gloves. <laughs> 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 That's one of those hand me down things. You know, okay, we're gonna do, we'll hand you some. Yeah. But anyway, did I get to the end of mine? Yes, unless you have some more tidbits. I, no, I'm really. I don't. Show and, show I, and tell. I think my show. I better sit down. You ready? Is about over with. I'll be up here talking. Oh. Come on, come on over here, and I'll scoot over here. Look, <laughs> he's right here. No, right and left. Yes. Right. Ms. Dorothy and I finished up our uh, fourth and fifth grade classes this morning at Oakwood Elementary. And we had a fruit tasting party. Party. <clears throat> and we, we, everyone was saying, oh, well, we don't like that, or we don't like this. Why don't you like it? Um, you, it know. doesn't taste good to you? I've never had it. <laughs> so we brought things, you know, that we always eat, bananas, apples. Right strawberries, <clears throat> but we also bought mangoes and kiwi and pineapple. I showed them how to cut it. And some of them still would need it. For those who said, I just don't eat fruit. I won't eat fruit. Okay, well, I just won't eat anything. I said, no, let me see. Here's some cookies. 
<laughs> this is the last day I'm going to see you for the year. You eat as much sugar as you want. <laughs> but we, we really had a good time. So if you have a bad, rain, a bad Sunday, like yesterday or like this morning, you're stuck inside with seven or eight kids. What do you do? Here's one, you have a cacti in a jar. You can get a, a jar, a mason jar, mayonnaise jar, anything you want, big enough for the kid to be able to put their hand inside the jar to plant. You start with river rocks, little, then little pebbles in the bottom of the jar, and then you put a little bit of sand, soil mixture. We have a lot of sand where I am. Then you put in the, ter the little terrarium, the mini cacti. You can get them at Bobo's. How much? Four for six dollars. Four for six dollars. <laughs> and put them in there within an inch from the edge. And once you have it done, you put it in the window and let it grow. It, they won't have instant gratification. It won't be to the top, but at least their project is done. So that's a, that's a good one. Here's my, tattoo, my apple tattoos. And I made the tattoos, I made these apples in April, and Kathleen said, well, can you bring them to class? Well, I could have, but they rotted. <laughs> I was so excited about today, I did them in April, and by, it took a month for the tattoos to come through, and they were rotten by me. But what you do is you get an apple, these are honey crisp apples, one side's red, one side is yellow. Put whatever you want. On mine, I put this one, stickers. I put my initials on this one, but on these, these two, I just put stars. And you get stars. I, I picked them up at the dollar store. Put stars on them, and oh, then the put that side of the apple in the window. It says that it takes five to seven days. It takes, it took 28 days for these. <laughs> and then after, after the, what? It's really reality. It, After the days, hey, it wasn't warm enough. Well, I was in my window. But anyway, I just kept peeling it back every couple days, looking like an impatient kid. After 28 days, I peeled it, and you could see. The apple has turned red, except where the letters are or where the stars are. Oh. You peel it off, it's still yellow, so you haven't tattooed apple. But again, no instant gratification. But if you know your kids are coming, if they don't stay with you, if you know their kid, they're coming for Father's Day weekend, do your apples now. And then you hang them. Just get it done now. These, I also did this one too early, and my plants got too big. But I took a cardboard eight carton. <clears throat> I didn't paint mine, but what I did, I put the eggshells in there with a little bit of soil and some perlite in there. <laughs> Those two. I think that's the next one. Okay. And I, I put a little bit of soil in them, took a spray bottle, and just sprayed it lightly, made sure it was damp, and then I took um, zinnia seeds and put in the eggshells. In six, I have a, a 12 pack, in six mm -hmm. of the of the little holes, I put eggshells. In the other six, I put soil, just soil. And I thought, well, they're going to grow in the soil. They're, I don't think they're going to grow in the eggs. Well, wrong. They all grew in the eggshells, six in the eggshells, nothing in the, in the soil. And I don't know why. I water. I know. I watered them every day. Excuse me? Protein in the egg? Excuse me? Protein in the egg? Calcium? Calcium? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. You know. We put eggshells when we plant stuff. I do too. So mm -hmm. a lot of good stuff in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe you need a soil yeah. test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I need to go to Bobo's. That's where they're working. <laughs> Can I mention your name? <laughs> anyway, it was the same soil. What I did on my cardboard container is I kept it shut, but on the top of it, I cut part of the, the top out and put saran wrap there. A window. Oh, next one, sorry. Uh oh. <laughs> there, there's my, my masterpiece. Here's my six. Oh, see it coming up right there? It looks like a little tiny snake head. Mm -hmm. But there is my window that I made. Because oh. I kept it in my greenhouse okay. on the shelf and just kept it shut. And every morning I went out there and sprayed it a little bit. These six came up fine. In fact, I took the shells 
out of the carton and just put them in my garden and they're growing. They're growing fine. Wow. After this, after these six came up, I said, you know, something's not right. I'm a junior master gardener, darn it. I can make that stuff grow in there. So I planted in those six, I planted sunflowers, sunflower seeds. In my opinion, you can make you can plant sunflower seeds in the bathtub in the dirt <laughs> on the sand on your on your rug. Right. They came up. Really? I have I took them out, gently cut it out, put it in my planter, and they're growing. But I don't know what happened. Okay, so you got this. You got this one. These are my little pots. <laughs> my little pots. If you get and this. You'll have to do a little couple of days maybe before your kids arrive because maybe like at my house, my husband said, how come we're having so much scrambled eggs all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs> I like love scrambled eggs. He said, no, no, I like grits and eggs. <laughs> so, well, I really, I thought you really loved scrambled eggs. He said, no, why? And, you're, what are you doing with those shells? Because you don't know, really crack shells like that. I would just barely take a spoon and peel off the top, empty it out. Well, I wanted these because I wanted to make little faces, little heads for my, my egg people. And what you do is put a little bit of soil in there, and you can use what, what? rye grass. Rye grass seed. Yeah. And it looks it like it doesn't anywhere. take any time at all. But then the seed, the Grass starts coming up and they look like they have mohawks. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then if you want, you can put them in the ground or just have the kids take them home and you'll find them throwing out in the yard somewhere. <laughs> but I, I just put, this one is sleeping, I put all kind of funny faces on them. You can pass them around if you want. Those are cute. Very cute. Maybe yeah. Not. He caught on to the eggs. Okay. I know. And this is you. Well, this is all of us. All of us. Do we have time? I think we have time. We're going to do a hands-on project. You're going to make a plant person. Uh, so while we're part. here, y'all, Carlene and I did this little fun project with the kids in Oakwood. And these are those little ergonomic type balls. Stress Yeah, stress ball. Yeah, stress you know, I'm and your kids don't have stress, so I didn't want to use that <laughs> word. But anyway, we wanted to show them approximately what the percentage of the United States, of the world, that people can actually live on. Mm. You have to. You came down to 1%. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And we passed out these little balls. And they can see all of the blue depicts the water. Mm -hmm. Then we have the part of the world that no one can live on because it's too cold. Mm -hmm. You know, if anyone lives there, you may find one or two people. But that's it. Then you've got the other portion of the world that is too hot. And we told, and they they realize why it's so important that we as individuals, it's not just for me, but it's, it's for everybody, why we should take care of what we got. Because once this 1% goes away, we're going to be fighting with each other to try to stay here, and somebody is going to lose. <laughs> but we use these little balls, and we used raisins. We gave them 12 raisins. And as we talked to them about what that portion was of the world that was not habitable, they ate a raisin. Mm. And after a while, they were down to just that one raisin from 12. So it was, it, you know, it's something that they could see. And, and having seen it, uh, they can deal with it. And then we read the book, what was it? Uh, Brother Sky and Sister, Sister Eagle. Sister Eagle and Brother Sky. And that's a, a, a story about the Indians there in Washington 
when the United States went to the tribe and told them they wanted to buy land, the chief asked uh, whoever had propositioned uh, to buy his land, the chief asked the question, how can you own the land and own the air? How can you own the sky? How, how can you do that? But you know, it all depends on how we think as a people, but he couldn't, it was hard for him to understand how can you own the sky. Everybody needs some of the sky. Everybody needs some of the land. And again, we have to think about each other because we all want to exist in this one percent that we have left. But anyway, I'm just talking while they get ready. I didn't want to hand out any more gloves. <laughs> Here's my, my person that I made. He's 10 days old. As you can see, if I get a little closer, you don't always know exactly where your ryegrass is going to end up. So it's coming out his ears, his nose, pretty much everywhere. So it's an old man. Sort of the He's an old man. That's the baby. There you go. There you go. But anyway, this is 10 days. This is what you get, this much hair. And when the kids did this experiment, I had them bring them back two weeks later. And some of them had mohawks. Some of them had braids. Some of them had... Uh, butches, butch haircuts, some had ribbons in their hairs. Also, not all kids made people. I had two, three monsters. Oh. They had eyeballs going all the way around them, or one big eyeball in the middle, or whatever. You know, I just, I just let them go. So it was pretty fun. Okay. Okay. What's your, your buddy? Thank you, dear. Your buddy is going to. <laughs> You're going to lay one down one minutes. cup per set yes. per group, one yes. per head, per, per person. Per You're going to stretch it out so that you see the bottom seam like this. Have your buddy do that to your hose. Thank you. Okay. Okay, your buddy holds yours. We better put it up here. Yeah. Which way? I think you put the Okay, once it's stretched out, everybody got their stretched out? Oh, yeah. Okay. The person who's. who's I don't know. Whose hose you're holding, they're going to sprinkle their ryegrass in the bottom along that crease. Along that. So sprinkle your ryegrass in the bottom. And then keep it spread open. Don't close it. There you go. Now take your, take your soil. You're going to pour your soil on top of your ryegrass. Okay. Seed in first. Seeds in first. The seed then, then, then your soil. So your okay. Put on soil. All, all of it. All of it. Pushing it down. All of it. Okay. On the outside, I'm doing this. See this? See this oh, on the outside? Okay. It doesn't matter if it's in the Oh, Now you're going to tie a knot at the bottom as close as you can. Now what? Now what? Tie a knot at the bottom as close as you can. Okay, no, tie what did you do before that? I did this. Now we want to get all that soil down there so you have a nice, a nice plant head. Hang on. All right. Okay. Okay. Push it down as far as you can. And then tie your knot at the bottom. Okay. Now squish it down. That's yours. You tie it one time. There you go. Push it down. So you should end up like this, and you can see your seeds at the top. This is the bottom. This is the top. Everybody have a little plant head? Yeah. There you go. Put a knot or a, a rubber band. A knot. A knot. Everybody pick two eyeballs. Uh, <laughs>
Okay, everybody got you a nice little plant head? Oh, there's your plant head. Okay, now we're going to, right in the center, you're going to make a nose. You're going to okay. grab a piece yeah. with your yeah. finger. You may want to take your gloves off. You're going to grab a little piece with your finger, and then you're going to wrap one of those rubber bands around it about, you know, four or five times. And you got a nose. And we're using the, where do you have to use more rubber bands? Oh, you have Okay. Use the yellow one. Any color you like. So this is the top. So this, mm -hmm. is, this is you do that on the side of it. Yeah. And then right in the middle, you're making a nose. Right in the middle, flatten it out a little bit, squish it so it's kind of flat like a pancake. Oh, you gotta make the face. Oh, and then do your nose right in the middle. Big nose, little nose. Some of the some of the kids' noses were big as a cherry. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Then we're going to make ears, guys, on both sides. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to pinch a little bit on the side. A little bit or a big, 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 big this. If you want a big, big ears, that's your other two rubber bands. Or your ears. One ear. Yeah, just pull it up. You're going to glue those. Oh, we're going to do the ears first. Yeah, let's do our ears. Oh, man, i got a lot of rice seeds in my ear. Yeah. And... I think I've got it's some in my nose, guy. too. It's going to wow, sneeze. Wow, you know, <laughs> okay, so we should look like this now. No, not yet. In a minute. Not yet. Shoot them Pretty soon. <laughs> Next, take two eyeballs. We're going to glue your eyeballs wherever you think your eyes should be on your little person. Or you can make a monster with one eyeball or four eyeballs. <laughs> Whatever. It's hard. You need one more eyeballs. Some glue. Have been opened. Yeah. Okay, everybody's got their eyeballs. No. That's it. No. Eyeballs. Yeah. Now they're going to be passing out some some multicolored uh, pipe cleaners. You can make uh, you can make eyebrows like I did. You can make whiskers. You can make uh, a mouth, any colors that you want. There's even some uh, little pom poms. When she, when she finished decorating yes. your head, uh, we have some rocks up here that you're going to do with that cup. Is you're going to put some rocks in your cup. You're going to kind of fill it up so that. So that he can he can sit in there nicely like that. Gina, now when you get home, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. No, make sure that everything that you blend is dry. So I probably wait till tomorrow. Give it 24 hours, because then you're going to have to dunk your head in water and let it sit in water for a while so it gets really soaked. Then you're going to turn it upside, the right side up, and with your rocks, you're going to put the end of your nose down in the bottom, like a whip. Like a whip. Okay. And then put your rocks in so that he'll sit up for you. And then you put him in a windowsill, or you can put him out on a railing outside. Or I have cats that knock it over. That's why he looks kind of battered. But do you only have to put it in water oh, okay. one time? You only have to submerge it once, but then you have to fill your cup up with water. Now, and then, and then watch your level. And in about ten days, you'll have lots of lots of hairy, hairy stuff coming out all over the place. We do. And you just trim it up the way you want. I took pictures of mine and would send it, text them to my my grandbabies.